Uh, we began last week going through 1 Thessalonians 4. We're going to look at it a little bit more today. But we want to talk about the Antichrist for a little bit. I don't like to give him a whole lot of time. But here's what's important. The Lord shows us ahead of time what's going to happen. He showed Daniel exactly the year that Jesus would be born. He showed Isaiah everything about the cross. Prophecy is given so that we have advanced notice of what is coming our way. The son of perdition has over a hundred scriptures about him alone. And there are three times as many prophecies about the last days as there were about the first coming. So should we just ignore them? And I know there's controversy over different ones. And you'll see today you can take the controversy and still fit what I'm telling you right in the midst of it, whether you're pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, or no-trib. Uh, that doesn't make any difference. The concepts we will say today fit into that because here's the truth. The spirit of Antichrist always precedes the coming of Antichrist. And if the spirit of Antichrist is not raging in our world today, then I'm blind, deaf, dumb, stupid, and retarded. Because he is on a rampage. I can remember Hilton Sutton. Some of you have heard of Hilton Sutton. He's in heaven now. But he's a wonderful, wonderful prophecy teacher. We used to have him when I was teaching at Oral Roberts University a lot. And he was just excellent. And I remember him saying one thing back in the uh, 80s. And, you know, kind of scratch your head because I didn't fully understand it. But he said, you know, before the Lord comes, there will be something that hits the world in such a way that it will involve all the nations of the world. And it shall be a dress rehearsal before the coming of the Lord. Well, the COVID virus pretty well hits that mandate, that it's in all of the earth, and it's shutting down all kinds of things. I hear our precious brothers in Pakistan who watch us on Sunday morning at the church we have there in Karachi, and they have gone through such unbelievable death and destruction because of this virus, because of flooding. You all know there's flooding so bad in China right now that the largest dam in the world is about to break. And there's so many precious underground Christians in that nation. So many things we need to believe for. So many things that people are seeing worldwide, not just the COVID. Through so many parts of Africa, the locusts have just taken out millions of acres of crops. Crazy stuff in our world right now. This is coming to the last day the last day could be two years it could be 20 more years we don't know and I'm not trying to put any kind of fear on you I just gave a prophetic word that, that we're not having that <laughs> so I'm not going to give you all bad news we're going to give you some great news today as well let's look about this guy nobody talked about him any more effectively than Daniel did so let's look over in Daniel the eighth chapter Daniel 8 and verse 23 Daniel 8 and 23 up on the screen will be the New King James edition. Here's what it says about this guy. As I said in our introduction, we call it the resume of the Antichrist. And here's a little bit of what Daniel saw. It said, in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full. Now, what's that mean? In other words, transgression will become more luminous, brighter. You see, I don't think bright's not the word, but it'll be seen more than ever before. That little bit of prophecy there could not have been fulfilled in 1840 because there was not television. There was not the Internet. There was not social media. Transgressions are come to the full. What that mean is that transgressions can be seen in its fullness. It can now be revealed. Couldn't be done before we had technology. This couldn't have happened when Schofield wrote his Bible commentary. In the latter time of the kingdom, when the transgressions are come to the full, we can all see them now. A king of fierce countenance. I don't know what his countenance looked like. Maybe he's got a sharp brow. Maybe he's got a real jagged jaw. Maybe he looks like this. 
Or maybe that fierce countenance would be blocked by a great big smile and friendliness. Because remember, the Antichrist is a proxy of Satan. And what he will do is use the olive branch of peace to try to deceive Israel to bring in a seven-year reign that halfway through he will say, <laughs> sorry, you all, I'm God. And that will be the abomination of desolation, which we'll talk about later. Well, he sits in the reconstructed temple in Jerusalem and declares himself God. That's the kind of guy we're looking at. Just as sure as the devil came into Judas to betray the Lord, the devil will come into this man. Probably already is. I'm sure he's alive. So anyway, the transgressions are come to the full. A king of fierce countenance. <clears throat> now watch this. An understanding dark sentences. What's that about? That's about the occult. No doubt about it. Hitler himself was saturated with occultism. And there's no doubt that this man will be a master of demonic power in the occultic realm. He will have understanding of dark sentences. Now the concept of dark sentence means, I felt this and I heard Brother Sutton again going back to him say this, that we have been given as spirit-filled believers a new language. Any of you today can pray in other tongues. It's not some big deal. It's not some hokey pokey thing for Pentecostals that roll on the floor. I received it as a Catholic. I received it when I was going to go be a priest. My goodness. <laughs> no, we now can speak in an unknown tongue. What's that unknown tongue do? You speak directly to the Father. And then you can ask him to give you an interpretation of your tongue. And sometimes you will pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in the Spirit. By the way, you can pray in the Spirit and not have to pray in tongues. <clears throat> but when you're praying in tongues, you can stop and ask the Lord to give you an interpretation of what you just prayed. And you will prophesy back to yourself. An incredible thing. It's wonderful. So those aren't dark sentences, but those are unknown sentences. Today, when Vicki came out and gave a message in tongues, you would know what that was, except that there was an interpretation. Well, what this is from the devil, because he always imitates what the Lord's people have as an inheritance, he's going to have dark sentences. That is things on his side that only he and his crowd will understand. Have you ever noticed in the deception of our day, how people involved in that deception just seem to know what to say. This group in New York says it, and the same group in California says it. The same group in Minnesota says it, and the same group in Miami says it. There's a connection, just as sure as we have in the body of Christ, there's a demonic connection. When I told you we were involved in a lot of deliverance when we lived in Colorado and Nebraska, I can tell you in a number of those situations, we heard devil worshipers that would have a tongue. And it wasn't a tongue of God. It was a phony tongue. It was speaking in tongues of dark sentences. It was guttural. It was ugly. It was bombastic. It sounded sharp. So when it says that this guy has a fierce countenance, he's also understanding dark sentences. Why do I tell you all that? Everything the enemy has done is only to imitate what the Lord already has. And so today when Bonnie sang about authority, folks, as the authority of the enemy tries to propel itself around our country, all you got to do is watch it on the news the authority of God's people will get stronger and greater. Not that it's not already there, but I believe we will be taking advantage of it and walking in our divine authority. Understanding dark, sens dark sentences shall stand up. Now, he hasn't stood up yet. We don't know who this guy is. The spirit of it is in the world. Like Brother Sutton says, the concept of it is now taking through the COVID virus, through riots, through anger, through bitterness. It is starting to take a hold in the sense that the spirit of Antichrist is definitely standing up. 
So not far behind that, probably he will. We don't know exactly when, but that spirit is definitely there. Let's look at the next verse, 24. This is in Daniel 8 now, if you're looking on your cell phone. And his power shall be mighty. That we can be assured of. He's going to wield a lot of power, and because he'll have power, but remember his power initially will be the power to try to bring peace, and looking as that he can take all sides, the Democrats, the Republicans, the ones in England, the ones in Germany, and start to pull together a consensus, and more than likely, we'll talk about this when we get in the book of Revelation later, he will more than likely use some type of an economic development to try to bring that about. But his power shall be mighty, but look at this next verse but not by his own power, because he is, again, here's an imitation, possessed. Do you know every one of you today in this room are possessed? Possessed of the Holy Ghost. The day of Pentecost was a day of possession, because that was a day when the very life of God came on the inside. But you think the enemy was going to stand back and not have his own thing? Of course he is. He loves to come in and possess the unbeliever. He can't possess a believer. He can certainly try to oppress you, but he cannot possess you. He wants to do the same thing, and that's what's going to happen in the last day. He's anti-Christ. He's against Christ, but all of his platform is an imitation of Christ. By his power shall be mighty, but not by his own. And he shall destroy wonderfully. In other words, he shall destroy completely. Now again, that concept there, that idea of wonderfully or completely has to do with being mesmerized, with being almost like hypnotized or being convinced. Let's even put that in, in a simpler term. In other words, what it shall be about this guy is that, hey, you, you got to go my way. Why, why wouldn't you? I'm the only one that's going to help you. Oh, well, go, go ahead and take this chip. You know, you, you got to buy and sell. You got to have food. You got to be able to go into a department store. You got to be able to go into CVS to get your pharmacy. You got to go into Walmart and get your stuff. You know, you, you got to you got to have it, don't you? You have to, and you all want to be at peace, don't you? You see, he will mesmerize. He will focus people in on what he tells them they must have. You think some of that spirit is maybe out there today? What I just said. You better do this. You better do that. You better wear that mask. You better do this. You know, I'm going to throw you out. Whoa. Have we ever seen in a four-month period of time so many commands and demands put on us and told what we're supposed to do and got to do and you better do? Now, if you disagree with me on that, I love you. But I'll tell you, and, and I'm all for being careful, all for it. And, folks, you watching today, I'm not. I know you're staying home because you're trying to be safe. And God bless you because you love your family. And I understand that. But I want to tell you what. Mandates have come out left, right, front, and center. This is what you've got to do. Particularly in California. You cannot go to church. If you do, you'll be fined. That is not constitutional. So... I'm here to tell you, somebody's already responding to them, my message. Well, good. Send your offering to, okay. <laughs> he shall destroy wonderfully and shall prosper. Oh, yes, the Antichrist will prosper and practice. In other words, he will continue doing this and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. Now, again, here's a matter of debate. He's not talking about you, the holy people. He is talking about the holy people that he will take advantage of because don't you think for one second, we'll get into this more in Revelations, that he won't use religion as part of his platform for deception. He'll not be able to deceive the body of Christ because of what I told you last week over in 1 Thessalonians 5, because you are of the light. You are of the day. You are people of light, so you're not going to be deceived. But there'll be a lot of holy folks who go right along with it. And God bless me, as much as I love the Jewish people, as much as I love Jerusalem, as soon as I drive into Jerusalem, I just feel goosebumps all over me 
every time I've gone to Israel. I just, I, as soon as we would come in on the tour bus, we would sing, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, lift up your voice gates and sing Hosanna in the highest. We just all start shouting that on that bus because there was a blessed presence of God. I love the Jewish people, but they will be deceived by this man. And they will come into a false place of rest with him. That's why we want to see so many Jewish people saved in this hour. That's why we want to promote Jewish ministries in Israel. That's why we want to stand behind those that are bringing a message of peace, of Mashiach, the one who is the Messiah. So holy people are going to be deceived, but you're not. Next verse. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart. Wow, isn't that the bottom line? Wasn't that the reason why Satan was thrown out of heaven? He wanted to take the place of God and be God. So now he feels like because he is now, that is the Antichrist, possessed with the devil, that he can take a position in the world because there is an allowance for him to be front and center. He shall magnify himself in his heart. Wow. The devil wanted that when he was tempting Jesus in the wilderness, and he still wants it now. Now look at this next one. This is so important. And by peace shall destroy many, because he will institute his platform by bringing peace. That's that place that three of you asked me about last week. It says, well, is this accord that President Trump is doing with the United Arab Emirates? Could that be what it says over in second, or first, current, uh, first Thessalonians 5 uh, about when it says peace, peace, safety? Beware in that moment. No, I don't think that's that at all. I think it's the peace this guy will try to bring. Then in that moment, when he or his cohorts start to say peace is coming, Wow. It'll be a deceptive peace. It'll be a peace to control. It'll be a peace to captivate and ultimately a peace to destroy. The same kind of a spirit of Antichrist that happened to the Jews in Germany in the 40s. And by peace he shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's part of the abomination of desolation we'll talk about later when he stands up and says, forget this stupid temple, I'm God. But he shall be broken without hand. Look at that. Isn't that good? In other words, God won't even have to use his hand. <laughs> he won't even have to come down. It will be by his word, by the brightness of his coming, that this guy is defeated. Now, let's look at a couple other places. And again, I'm trying to be so heavy with the Antichrist teaching. But look over in 2 Thessalonians 2. Verse 1, we'll go through this a little more quickly. 2 Thessalonians 2. Here's the Apostle Paul telling the Thessalonians who thought, boy, the rapture's already come and I've missed it. Oh, wow, it's the last days and I don't understand it. So here's what he says to them. He says, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you, next verse, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled. That's for us, folks. We don't have to be shaken in mind or troubled. And here's why. Keep living your life like you have. If you're buying a house, that's great. If you just had a baby, don't be worried about it. If your kids are just now going to school and you say, well, I hope they get all the way through college. Boy, if Jesus comes back, it's going to mess up my family plans. No, it won't. Go ahead and live like it will. <laughs> what do you think heaven is? <laughs> like going to Hotel 6 for the rest of your life? I mean, come on. That's a wonderful place. <laughs> Don't be soon shaken in mind or troubled. What Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He's ready for you, folks. It's going to be a blast in heaven. Not to be shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter. In other words, not by the spirit of this guy that will look so convincing. So this is the way you must go. Walk ye in it. 
and by word and by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had already come. See, they thought it already happened and they'd missed it. So they're moving right into guilt and condemnation. And man, we've messed up and we're bad. Here's what Paul says. Go ahead on next verse, John. Let no one deceive you by any means. This is important. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. Now let me stop you for a second. Would you say, and you may not, but I would say there is a falling away to immorality. There is a falling away to hatred. There is a falling away to a spirit of destruction like I have not seen in my lifetime. This makes the Vietnam riots that I saw when I graduated from high school in 1969 look like child's play. Because that very spirit of perdition is what I told you before. It's always the preamble of the actually person himself. It is always the setup. Let no one deceive you for that day will not come. Now here's the question and here's where you have to decide. Is that the second coming of Christ or is that the rapture? I believe it's the rapture. Some of you believe the rapture will occur before the tribulation of seven years, somewhere in the middle. We'll talk more about that as we go along. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. We're starting to see it big time, worldwide. And the man of sin, Antichrist, is revealed, the son of perdition. So regardless of what your eschatology is, None of that can happen. There cannot be the taking away of the church. There cannot be the place of the rapture until at least this guy is on stage. He may not be right into act one, two, three, and four, but at least that he is in the place of being revealed. And notice his name is the son of perdition. Why would he be the son? Because daddy is perdition. Daddy is the father of all lies. You know, anytime you lie, it's always the enemy who has led you into the lie. We talk so often in this church about identity. And when the, the enemy comes and tries to lie to you about your identity, that lie is always taking the power of sin in your flesh and trying to tell you you're something that you are not. That's why I told you the greatest thing that happened when Jill and I were young and got saved and there was a homosexual man that I thought he'd be homosexual all his life. And he got free from that lifestyle. He got redeemed from that lifestyle. And he came and said to us, I have believed a lie. And now I am free. And now I am no longer under that bondage. That was so powerful, a testimony, that we decided to give our lives to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I never thought anybody in that world could come out of that world. But once we saw that that was real, I began to see God has power. God has authority. God, we can take the authority that Jesus has given us and forget the power of sin that's in our members that's trying to talk to us and tell us. That's perdition. I don't have to live with that perdition anymore. But the son of perdition, the man of sin, as he is revealed, will have a tremendous draw. That's why we want to stay drawn to the Holy Spirit in this hour so we would not be drawn to any of that garbage as it comes more and more prevalent in the days ahead. Go ahead to the next verse, John. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. You know, folks, right now, Across this country, at least, and I'm sure across the world, attendance in church is down unbelievably. And just doing some polling, this was from the George Barna group, that even if a vaccine came up that people felt comfortable with, I'm not sure I'd feel comfortable with it ever, but even at that, 40% of church attenders said they're not even sure they'd come back to church. There is a place of despondency. There is a place of apathy. There is a place of pulling away. There is a place of complacency that will be part of what the spirit of Antichrist is trying to do in the world today. I saw just a week or two ago, Creflo Dollar was teaching on the spirit of complacency because every pastor is seeing it. 
And it's not this complacent because people are just lazy. It's because they're distraught. And in their place of being distraught, they're pulling back. And as they're pulling back, they're coping by getting involved in everything else to try to distract themselves from the hurt that's in them rather than just saying, Father, I just give myself to you. You are the champion. I'm a champion in you. I have authority in you. I have blessing in you. I have joy in you. I have power in you. I don't have to pull away to some other diversionary thing. Diversion will be a giant thing in this hour. So look at this next part. Boy, Paul just packs it all in here. He says, so that he sits as God in the temple of God. That's the abomination of desolation. We'll get into that more when we get to Revelation 13. Showing himself that he is God. In other words, he will show to the world and let everybody know, I am God. Look what I've done for the world. Look what I've done for the economy. Forget all this Jewish stuff. Forget all this temple. Y'all stop all those dumb offerings. I am God. That will be the ultimate of what Satan has wanted from time immemorial when he was kicked out of heaven. And now he thinks through inhabiting another man that he will win the victory. You say, well, if he knows all this, if he's that smart pastor and he realizes all this in Scripture, why in the world would he keep doing it? Because he thinks, even in this hour, that he can overcome the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And this is exactly what will take place, showing himself that he is God. Next verse. Do you not remember these things when I was with you and I told you these things? Paul said that. Next verse. And now you know what is restraining. Here we go. And now you know what is restraining. What's holding this character back? That he may be revealed in his own time. What is the restraining power? Next verse. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. See, that's what I'm telling you in the world. This is before the Antichrist shows up. And I like the King James uses the mystery of iniquity. Now, I taught this on two Wednesday nights ago. I just want to mention it really quick. The mystery of godliness that we talk about from Colossians 1.27 that Paul talked about in Ephesians 2, and he talked about it over in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, is the mystery. What's the mystery that's been hidden? Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm possessed, one other person, the King of kings and the Lord of lords by the Holy Spirit wants to talk through me, think through me, move through me, love through me, joy through me, hug through me, smile through me. Everything for me to live is Christ. Possession, total possession. Before in the old covenant it was law, keep rules. Now it's let somebody else be Jesus inside of you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ lives in me. It's not a group of rules and religion. See, the Antichrist will deceive the people going by rules and laws, but he won't deceive those who are under grace because under grace means I'm living by the life of another. And as I'm living by that life of another, I have the mystery of the Godhead on the inside of me, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul said he wanted to present every man complete in Christ. Wow. So he's presenting us complete. So get your fears out of the way. Get your shyness out of the way. Get your inferiority out of the way. It doesn't have to exist anymore. Why? The mystery is the King of kings and his holiness in you. Ah, but the Antichrist is going to do the same thing in reverse. The mystery of iniquity is what? That iniquity going into a person, that that iniquity, just like Christ living in us, is now Satan living through that person. Takes the same idea. He got the idea of possession from God. That's why demons want to inhabit people because they have no authority on their own. They have to come into a body. The only people that have authority in this earth, earth are those that have a human body. That's, if not, then he wouldn't want to possess. That's why when... Jesus cast the devil out. They wanted to go into those pigs. They had to get into something that had flesh on them because they have no authority. See, the enemy has no authority over you, even when he tempts you through the power of sin in your members, unless you give it to him. Once you give it to him, he then get, has a body that he can work through. Without having a physical body, it don't work. 
So the mystery of lawlessness is just the opposite of the mystery of Christ in you, which is the mystery that Jesus said it was hid from all generations. Paul said it was hid from all generations and now is made known to the body of Christ. This lousy, dark, horrible person will take that in reverse and try to use it for his victory just like we in the new covenant have it for our victory. For the mystery of lawlessness is at work. Only he who, now watch this, say with me. Only he who now restrains the Holy Ghost will do so until he is taken out of the way. So now here's two interpretations. Some will say, is that talking about the Antichrist taken out of the way? No, at this point in time, he's not taken out of the way. He's got seven years to do his horror, and horror it will be. No, that right there is, you notice the he up there is capitalized twice. Only he who now restrains will do so until he, Holy Spirit, is taken out of the way. What's that mean? Will the Holy Spirit be gone during the tribulation? No, but the church age will be gone. Church age will be over. Holy Spirit, I mean, there's still people going to be saved in the tribulation. Don't you think they won't fall to their knees when they see the, the trumpet judgments? Wow, of course they will. But I want to tell you what, in the book of Revelation, in the first three chapters, the church is mentioned 19 times. From Revelations 4 through 18, which is all about the tribulation period that we'll study later, no mention of the church at all. So, is this saying that then the church age is out? It's being restrained right now because we're still in that church age. The body of Christ is still here. Now you have to fit that into your flow of whether it's before, mid, or after. That's up to you. But for sure, he's going to have to be revealed. For sure, the Holy Spirit is restraining. And for sure, there will be a catching up of the church. And we'll look at that in just a minute. Go ahead, next verse, John. And then the lawless one will be revealed. Ah, oh, then when the Holy Spirit is taken out, that is not taken out that people couldn't be saved, but as that new covenant being over with, and then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy him with the brightness of his coming. That will be his coming at the end of the battle of Armageddon when he comes back and takes him flat out. Now, whether you want to believe that that other part in there is rapture, that's up to you. I know there's a lot of different people. Some people even say, well, the Antichrist is just a figure of evil. It's not a person. I don't believe that. I don't see how you could take what Daniel has said. I don't see how you could take what's in the book of Revelation. I don't think you could take Paul's revelation here, John over in uh, the book of John, 1 John rather. So that's just my take on it. But the lawless one will be revealed. Here's my feeling. You're not going to have to face the curse of the Antichrist. If, if we go up halfway through, then we would see him in those first three and a half years when he is trying so hard to bring peace and fixing the world together, but he'll be doing every type of malevolent thing. But buddy, when that midpoint comes, boom, then the wrath of God comes upon the earth. I want to tell you what, God has not appointed you to wrath. He took the wrath and put it on Jesus. If he could put wrath on you, then the cross was mighty small. Amen. That was put on Jesus. And here's the scripture I'm going to read. Well, we'll come to that scripture in just a second. Let me give you the rest of this. <laughs> the lawless one, there's so much stuff. Uh, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Light will take out darkness. Boom. And it's taking it out right now. Next verse. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. See, it's not just the Antichrist, it's Satan working through him, the mystery of lawlessness, with all power, signs, and lying wonders. He'll try to heal people, they'll be healed. He'll try to open blind eyes, they'll be open. He'll do lying signs and wonders, but I want to tell you what, just what Bonnie's saying today, you can be sure as he's raising his authority, our authority as sons and daughters of God with a powerful inheritance because of the word, we'll also see mighty signs and wonders. And we'll hit that more as we look in the book of Revelation, next verse. 
and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. So what do we need in this hour? A massive revival. What do we need in this hour? People to be saved. What do we need in this hour? Not the mystery of iniquity of a devil in encapsulating a person's body, but the Holy Spirit living in and through them. Don't you think the enemy wants to stop a revival in this hour, get people passive, get people complacent, get people pulling away? Of course he does. Just as sure as he doesn't want to have people go vote in November. Yeah, let's just get folks complacent. Let's get them pulling back. No, we need to charge. That's why I'm so glad Bonnie sang that song today. We're taking that place of authority. Okay, well, you say... Well, Pastor, I'm so edified by your message today. I've just been so lifted up by all this evil and all these things going on. <laughs> well, I got some good news for you. <laughs> some real good news. You're not going to have to suffer. Will we go through hard times? Yeah. Will we go through difficult times? Yeah. Are things going to be just totally easy? They're not right now. But you are the champion. And he is the champion because the champion is alive and well and manifesting himself through you. And that manifestation is called glory. And that glory is upon the body of Christ until the Holy Spirit says that dispensation is now over. And when he says that, all the end time stuff will take place. Now, the word rapture is not in the Bible. But the word caught up is. And the word caught up that we'll look at, John, if you want to go over there, over to uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. The word caught up in Latin, the old Latin Vulgate of St. Jerome, is the word rapturo, from where we get rapture. So caught up is from the word rapturo, and that's where we get that word. So here's the reason. Here's just a couple of the reasons why I feel like there will be a rapture, whether you think it's, it's before the Antichrist uh, comes in or halfway through, and we'll talk later. We'll try to give you pros and cons on each of those as we go along. But I want to give you the idea that we are safe and that God takes care of us. Here's why. Remember, we just said the church was mentioned 19 times in the first three chapters of Revelation from 4 to 18, nothing. Remember, you got 22 chapters in Revelation. At the end, we're talking about the millennium, so forth, things to discuss later. So much to talk about. Uh, so those things are not mentioned. So that's another reason why I think, wow, the church is not mentioned. Why? It could be because I think it's gone. I think he that was restrained has taken his restraint off and is lifted out. That's just me. Second reason, Jesus, over in Matthew 24, Luke 21, Jesus compared the last days to Noah and Lot. Well, both of those guys were saved out of the situation. There wasn't a raindrop that had to hit Noah. And there wasn't a fiery ember that had to be hit on Lot. Now, was Noah, in essence, in the flood? Yeah, but he was safe from the flood. And Jesus said, as it was and the, in the days of Noah, so it shall it be in the last day. So I guess it's how you see whatever the ark is. I talked with a brother here in the church, and, and it was great. He said, you know, I believe we'll go on through the tribulation, but there will be a type of ark around us. That could well be. Maybe that would be the way. I believe we'll be picked on up out of here. And you see Lot. Lot was protected from that. Yes, his wife turned around, but he didn't. And he was protected, as I believe will be protected in that last day. And then uh, let's look up here just for a second, on this whole concept of rapture. This is the, the most famous rapture verse. You take it for whatever the Lord says to you. But to me, this is the comfort. You see, why would the Apostle Paul say, in just the chapter of 1 Thessalonians 5, he says twice, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another that Christ is coming back. Comfort one another that the Antichrist will be put down. Comfort one another that I never leave you or forsake you. Why would he say that if you're going to go through the hell of the tribulation? What kind of comfort would that be? He, he purposely says, these are the things I want you to speak to one another. We'll look at those in just a second. For this we say to you on the screen, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So the resurrection of those who have died 
but the transformation of those of us who are alive. The resurrection of those, those guys will come first. Hallelujah. Then we'll come right after it. Next verse. Next verse, John. Go there we go. Then we who are alive and remain, hopefully that'll be all of us, shall be caught up together. Together. You're going to have to put up with me throughout all eternity because we're going up together. <laughs> with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Now, I want to tell you what. This looks nothing like the second coming of Christ. That's not some little pull away thing as it says over in 1 Corinthians 15 in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> That's not in the twinkling of an eye. There's going to be a whole lot of eyes that are going to fall down and say, oh, I wish I'd served the Lord. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord on the earth. No, in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. You're with him now, and you're going to be with him forever. If he's protecting you then, he's going to be protecting you now. If he's protecting you forever in heaven where there be no sickness, no death, no graves, no funerals, don't you think he's not watching over you right now in the preparation for that? Of course he is. He's watching over his bride before the marriage supper of the Lamb. I guarantee you. Next verse. Therefore, here we go. Everybody say this out loud with me. Read it off the screen. Here we go together. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Thank you, Lord. So now we can say, hey, I'm looking forward to the return of Christ, but I'm not going to have to face the wrath of God. Now let's look at just a scripture here on the wrath of God so you'll know that what I'm telling you is true. Look over. Uh, John, let's go to 1 Thessalonians 1.10. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 10 in the King James. Look at this now. This is an important scripture. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, look at this now, y'all, who delivers us from the wrath to come. How in the world would he have me in his wrath that will come on the earth if I am free from that wrath? Can't see it. Can't see it. Here's the, uh, the other place I look at, have you look at. 2 Thessalonians, oh no, oh, excuse me, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16. No, no let's go back, John. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. We'll hit the other in a second. For God did not appoint us to wrath. Hallelujah. I'm not appointed to wrath. I'm not going to walk in wrath. And so thus, the things of the Antichrist will not have to take us down. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. The good news is, you've got a great future. The good news is, Things are coming that are going to be a blessing, not only just in heaven, but I believe in the days ahead. Folks, I think we have exciting times in front of us because we're going to see the supernatural hand of God that Bonnie sang about today that is going to be all around us. I want us to start expecting that. All comfort each other. Encourage each other. Gerald's always teaching that to the men's group. Encourage each other. Lift each other up because we've got mighty and wonderful things. I want us to start expecting miracles. My goodness, I worked for the man who said, forever, expect a miracle. Well, I want to expect it now. I want to believe for it now. I'm desiring for it to come now because it's more expedient now than ever before because a lying person, the Antichrist, is going to bring miracles. Well, bless God if he can do it. And we have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who's going to live forever. Why can't we walk in them? You see, once we get our unworthiness out of the way, once we get understanding that we have the mystery of the Godhead complete on the inside of us, what's that do? Runs principalities and powers far away. And you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Stand up with us here this morning. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done. And this earth as it is in heaven. You know what it's going to take in this hour, ladies and gentlemen? A greater trust in God than we've ever known. Just simple. That's 101, isn't it? A greater trust in his anointing. A greater trust in his presence. A greater trust in his word. And I don't even have to work myself up to it. I just simply release myself into his keeping every day. And I am believing to see the fullness of God manifested in this hour. Let's pray. Father, we turn our eyes upon you. God, we can talk about the Antichrist till we're blue in the face, but we're not going to turn our eyes upon him. We're going to turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. <laughs> and yeah, the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and the light of his grace. Father, I'm just believing for supernatural signs. Signs in this hour for those who need income, those who need work, those who need financial blessing. It's been in my heart all week to start praying for those people and absolutely proclaiming and declaring that they're going to see the fullness of what they need financially. Look up at me here for a minute. Uh, how many are needing a financial breakthrough? Anybody? Raise your hand up if you need a financial breakthrough. Today. Little or small, great or whatever. All right. Now, I know we haven't been doing any laying hands on folks, but you see some of those people around you. I want to pray for your breakthrough. How many are needing employment right now that's a better employment than what you had before? Employment, folks? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mark there. Okay. Can we just believe today? See, the Antichrist is going to load folks with money and with help. Oh, come join me. I'll make you prosperous. I've got the King of kings and Lord of lords that owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and he desires for you to prosper and be in health as your soul is going to prosper. Well, your soul, bless God, I proclaim it, is going to prosper. You're not going to fall to worry, fear, and dread. You're going to prosper in your soul. Lift your hands up again if you've got to. Have something today financially that you need help in. Father, in the name of Jesus, look around you. Look around you. Now put your hand on them, but look around you. Lord God, right now for that brother, for that sister, we're believing for supernatural intervention. Open doors of favor. Opportunities of blessing. Income coming to them, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, every man, every woman in this place, that has been hurt because of the COVID virus, because of this China virus. I believe in Jesus' name that there is a provision that is stronger, a provision that is greater, a provision that is more dependable, a provision that will always last, that is in the economy of heaven. I'm declaring this, Lord, over these individuals. Father, I thank you that you give Greg income in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you give Tommy Smith up there in Nashville today in the name of Jesus. I just thank you, Lord God. I just thank you in Jesus' name. I thank you for meeting Nicole's needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Tim and Jana are going to be healed today. Kathy's going to be healed. Charles going to be healed. Macon's going to be healed. Every person today that needs financial blessing, I just thank you, Lord God. Yes, you are able to make all grace abound towards us that we having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. I thank you for that, Father. I thank you for that, Father. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands out here to our brother Greg right here in the front. Isn't Greg a blessing? He's got such a wonderful attitude, such a heart. But you know what? Because the entertainment industry has gone down. Because there's nobody doing concerts. I don't care whether you're doing classical music, country music, Broadway music. There isn't anything. My niece, my nephew and her husband, or my niece and her husband live in New York City. And you know what? They said Broadway is just empty. I had lived for years thinking I was going to sing in New York City before I got saved. That was my whole heart. I was going to go sing at the Metropolitan Opera and I was going to sing on Broadway. And I had already had doors open. I was going that way. And then I got saved. And I got all kinds of friends up there now. Guess what? Unemployed. They haven't got any work. Greg drove bands all over the country. Now those bands aren't performing. Country bands, rock and roll bands, none of them. And so Greg needs to have an opportunity. 
And Greg, I'm focusing on right now, right now for you because I know there are others that are the same. And Debbie Smith's son, Tommy, who lives up in Nashville, did all kind of, he did lighting mostly, did he, Deb? Yeah, lighting and sound. He was a lighting and sound expert for all the big names in Nashville. Nothing happening. He's got four children. We want to believe for these guys. Shut your hands out towards Greg and Tommy's up there in Nashville. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these men who have been so hurt by the COVID virus because it has taken down the entertainment industry. So in the name of Jesus, open doors, open doors, open doors, open doors for Greg, open doors for Tommy. Oh, I just thank you, Lord God, that whatever the new thing, the new thing, the new thing that you want to do for these brothers, that it shall be established in this hour and you will start to bring people across their path that they'd never met before, that they'd never known before. But now there's going to be a chance to use the many giftings that is in this man. Lord, you gift him in ministry. Everywhere he would go, he would minister to the bands. He would minister to the roadies. He would minister to the superstars and tell them that Jesus is Lord. Use Greg's evangelical gift, Father, wherever you call him to be. And I thank you, Father, his bills are going to get paid. He's not going to go into debt. He's not going to go in a hole. He is not going to lose out because my God in the mystery of Christ living in him will bring glory, glory, glory through Greg Moss and through Tommy Smith in this day and in this hour. And I thank you for it, God. And for all the rest of the people here today that need that financial blessing, praise God, it shall happen even as he has said. Glory to his name. Here's another thing. I'm going to let you all go in just a second. You know, we've talked in the last two services about praying in other tongues. Simple as pie. If you're born again, you can receive it. So, uh, Mary, would you pray for some people this morning to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? I'll be up here too. If you'd like to stay, as we'll dismiss here in just a second as we pray. If you haven't received that, please do it. The devil takes his people and they speak dark sentences. Why can't we speak sentences of light? Sentences of power. Sentences of glory. Sentences of where the Holy Ghost is just praying right through us. If you'd like to do that, Mary would stay up here and pray with you. Man, you'd receive it. Just the other night, our brother Joey gave his testimony in the men's meeting. And he listened to my old boss, Or Roberts, years ago. And Joey, I loved what you gave in your testimony. He said he watched him on TV and he said, hey, you can receive your prayer language. Just ask for it. And then <clears throat> he asked for it. He got it. Toyota. And as soon as he did it, he started speaking other tongues. And he said he did for what? Joey, two days? So much so that his face hurt him. Because he'd just been praying in the Spirit for so long. It's not some weirdo, strange, crazy thing. Anybody can do it like to. I'd like to leave that open for you to come up and pray with Mary today if you would like to receive that. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you come up and pray with me. I'm going to lead you to Christ today to make sure that you absolutely know that Jesus is Lord. Will you lift your hands up? Let's just praise Him one more time. I'll let you go. Father, I thank you for your more than enough. El Shaddai, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Shalom, our peace. I thank you, Father. Lord, I trust you. I belong to you. My life is yours. I don't look to the flesh anymore. I look to the Spirit of God to be the answer to everything that we need in this day and time. I praise you for it, God. May we go in the boldness of the Holy Ghost as we leave into this week. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. If I need prayer, come on up here to the front. Sing a little, turn your eyes on Jesus. Yeah.